Hello everyone, Kenty Tiger here from Bengali Engineering and Play. It has been a while since I've been with you. Uh, that's kind of life events, a uh, couple deployments, and a whole bunch of other stuff. So anyway, we're uh, back in the world here. And uh, what I wanted to do, a friend of mine introduced me to a game called Star Sector. And uh, just wanted to do some brief rundowns of certain things. We'll actually go into the game. We'll discuss a couple things on how to get started and uh, kind of go over the the GUI because um, one of the uh, one of the problems I have with most new games is just understanding what buttons to push so this one is uh, kind of a general overview as well as a knobology lesson so this is uh, the the proverbial getting started with Star Sector so uh, obviously uh, getting the game is uh, is a grand start so uh, they do not uh, currently sell on Steam or Epic, um, either one. So uh, the trick of finding it is actually going to their website. So their website is Fractical Star. Or sorry, let me let me look at that one again. Fractical Softworks. Fractal, fractal, maybe fractal. We'll, let's we'll look right up here in the corner if you can see that. Fractal. So let me let me try and. Nope, can't zoom in. Yep. Fractalsoftworks.com. Fractalsoftworks.com. So after I've said that like 50 times, then then Fractalsoftworks.com. Um, under Category and Releases is where you can actually uh, find the button to buy. It's going to tell you all about it. There's a couple different options there. Um, when you buy, uh, you'll actually download it. Uh, obviously, if you're on the uh, website, then uh, you're going to be able to download, huh? Because you're connected to the internet. So uh, they'll send you via email uh, after you pay your whopping fifteen dollars. That's right, it's only fifteen dollars. There you go, fifteen dollars, twenty-five percent off the uh, final price. Whenever they get around to making a final, right now. As you can see here, we're in version, uh, where does it say that? So uh, one of the things to, uh, to know about this, you're basically, this is entirely Java-based. So underneath everything is Java, uh, which makes it extremely multi-platform friendly. So as you can see here on the, uh, on the download screen, we can download for Windows, we can download for Mac, we can download for Linux. So this is truly a multi-platform game. Um, as I understand things, it functions pretty much the same in any of the environments, regardless of what operating system you're using. So whichever flavor of operating system you want to do, uh, this is going to do just fine. Uh, it claims a, a 3 gig system RAM minimum. I don't know if that's true or not. Um, I, none of my machines have only 3 gigs, so I have no idea. Uh, so I have been told in reading on the uh, forums and such, uh, you can throw a bit more RAM at it. Uh, it will not use over nine or sorry eight gig, and if you set it to go over eight gig, you actually get an error. Um, so uh, some of my friends have tried that and said, nope, don't do it. So anyway, uh, minimum resolutions it says here are 1280 by 768. Uh, the base resolution, of course, is HD uh, 1920 by 1080. Uh, that's probably the ideal. If you get into UHD, you will have a lot of problems, not necessarily with the game, but with it rendering on the screen, as you're, you're going to see here uh, when we actually get into, this, into the game. So there's uh, certain settings that you have to change just to get it to operate at those levels, and you will have other problems. So... Um, if you run it on a, uh, one of my other problems, of course, is I'm a, uh, on the game machine, I'm a dual monitor machine, so I can't run in full screen because it just does weird things. Um, so I can't run any game in full screen. Uh, I like running the borderless windowed, uh, versions. The, it doesn't work in this particular case, and it's just because of the sheer size of trying to render in UHD. So it's a UHD issue, not necessarily a game issue. Uh, if you absolutely have to run in UHD, which I did, um, 
you know, I, I have the resolution, I want to run, run in it, um, then there are sacrifices that you ultimately have to make. So, uh, pre-order, uh, they will send you by email a code, which uh, is your basically activation code, and once that's in there, then it will run for you. So, anyway, uh, back to uh, our, let's, uh, hmm, where is our features page? So anyway, the, the, the Down and Dirty, good game for, uh, it, it's well worth your $15. It will be, uh, you know, hundreds of hours of your life that you'll never get back. So well worth the $15. So less than the uh, price of a meal, and you will have an infinite replayability. Uh, at least I think so. Um, there are a lot of mods out there because, after all, it is Java-based. So basically, there, there's hundreds of mods. And in fact, let me let me go to a. I think I have. Yep. So this is the mods page here. This is on their uh, forum. And you can actually end up on this uh, mods index page. And it shows you. So there's these libraries here that, of course, you want to download immediately and get them into your mods directory, uh, which, is, which is fairly easy. Um, they, they describe how to do that. Uh, let me see if it might, might not be on this particular screen. Nope, don't see it. Um, Anyway, there's a wherever you install your game, so it's going to say Star Sector, and under that there is a mods folder, and in the mods folder is where you just extract those particular things. And, and some of these are going to be zips, some of them are going to be RARs, some of them are going to be 7 zips. And what you do is unzip it, and you know, in whatever fashion of, of, uh, of unzipping that you use, and sometimes there's a folder, sometimes it's just fine in the folder that it's in. Uh, either way, you copy either that folder as it is or the folder inside the unzip folder to your mods directory. And then when, and we'll get there. So all of your mods are in the one directory. So these libraries have to be there. And the reason why is that a lot of these mods actually use those as references. So it's a library in the truest sense. It's something that's out there that can be used by anything, doesn't necessarily do anything on its own, but... Hmm. So portrait packs, we'll get into what those are. Bunch of different portrait packs. Flag packs, we'll show you what those are. Miscellaneous mods, utilities, that sort of thing. Uh, active gates, some of these where you see them in red are very likely not going to run. Um, these are things that have not been updated. Um, some of the ones that are in blue, you see the 95 alpha versus the 95.1 alpha. Uh, these are going to show up as orange, these 95 alpha ones. Um, and right now the game is on uh, 0.95, decimal 1 alpha, rev 6, uh, release candidate 6. So that's where they're at right now. I believe that was released in December, uh, and they release about once a year a uh, major update every, uh, well, ma major-ish update uh, about once a year. Uh, so I've read. So miscellaneous mods, these are, uh, just think about these as, as some form of utility that they add to the game, um, whether it's functionality or anything like that. Uh, down here are the actual utilities, which trying to differentiate between uh, miscellaneous mods. These mods add new features to the game. Utilities. These mods add new features to the game. So, <laughs> trying to understand the difference between the two, I just kind of lump them in the same. They're a utility. They don't really add factions or ships or anything, although some of them do. Um, but, in the end, they're utilities. They just make features and and such forth different now i i can't I, I suppose anybody who's talking about a game can't avoid making some recommendations terraforming and station construction highly recommend this one um this adds the ability as the title says to terraform 
So basically you come up on a world that is otherwise disastrous and this lets you actually do some terraforming. Uh, it's expensive like anything else in the game, but uh, in the end it's well worth it because you can take an otherwise useless planet and turn it into something that is actually very much usable. Another one here is Industrial Evolution. Uh, I'll let you look at both of these um, uh, on your own because obviously I'm biased. Uh, the different things that you might like versus the things that I might like are two completely different things. Grand Colonies uh, will talk about what that one is, but those are the three that I would recommend right off the bat as utility pluses. There's a bunch of utilities that in my viewpoint are just must have, but rather than turning this into a video about these are all the different mod juice you use, uh, we're just gonna go on, on, on and on for it. Um, the other thing over here is content expansions, mega mods. Uh, Nexarellin is, is a very popular uh, mega mod. It, it's, it does add features and factions and, and stuff to the game, but it's more of an auxiliary kind of a, of a concept where it just adds functionality to the game. Things that when you're playing vanilla versus uh, Nexarellin, you, you kind of think, wow, why isn't this part of the base game? It, it really should be. So I almost say this is a must play, but, but play the vanilla first, see how you like it. There's a lot of things to like. Um, and content expansions. So these are things like uh, factions, ships, uh, all that sort of thing that can be added to the game. Faction mods specifically here, you see a lot of these are in red. Um, a lot of these will in fact function uh, if you make some changes and you have to be a little bit familiar with, uh, uh, with coding and where things are. Uh, Galaxy Tigers, of course, I had to play Galaxy Tigers. Uh, doesn't work. Um, it is not been updated. Uh, so can't can't make that one work not without you know going farther into the code of the mod itself and figuring out what's going on there so um, anyway mods these are mod page so you know where to go all right let's get right into it let me uh, drag this off the screen with uh, sage looking at you back onto uh, the screen. All right, without further ado, we'll actually start. So when you first boot up Star Sector, it's going to say, please put in your code. And you're gonna have the box on there and you can literally copy paste from the email uh, onto it. It gives you uh, functionality on how to do that. Uh, it shows you here in your drop down what you can do i am obviously sitting here at uh, at uhd uh, uncheck if you're going to run uhd you're going to have to uncheck this and it will act like it doesn't actually do anything there's another setting you have to change in the in the settings file um, to make this work and uh, there's a lot of uh, forum entries on how to do that what you need to do um, because probably the vast majority of, of folks uh, who are going to play this are not going to run UHD. Um, I, uh, UHD obviously not a gaming thing because your your uh, frames per second it tends to be a bit lower. Um, so uh, sound obviously you want it on. So options, um, not a whole lot to do here. If you're going to do scaling, scaling is according to the resolution that you have on your screen. So interestingly enough, the UI in this case is a fixed scale. So UHD, because the resolution of the screen is so much larger, then your UI is going to be tiny. And so you want to scale up according to what you want. Uh, and you can scale on, on any number in between. Uh, 200 works uh, good for me. It's small enough that it doesn't you know, consume everything but it's large enough you can actually read what the heck is going on. 
So uh, one of the things it says is turn anti-aliasing off when you're on any of the even. So 100, 200, 300, and I'm not sure why it's only on the evens, but that's what they say. So you can also click on the used recommended here. So uh, in this case, we've already applied that. That's what's uh, going on here. So it's a cancel. Uh, mods. So all of your mods that show up here, this happens when you start. If you dumped one in right now, not going to see it. Even if you go back out and come back in, not going to see it. So what you end up having to do is go all the way out, close it, and come back in once those mods are in. So uh, one of the things it shows you here, let's pick this one. This one is for 95.1 Alpha. Our current game version is 1 Alpha RC6, Release Candidate 6. So effectively, we're just a single version or a couple versions behind. So it shows up as yellow. And like it says here, uh, this mod might run, might not. So take your best guess. Uh, everything that's in white, is the same version so you're all good to go or should be all good to go so mods list uh, again I won't go uh, into any details here this is the number of levels you can have as a player character normally it's 15 this adds uh, another 25 so you can go all the way up to level 40 with perks and everything auto save not really an auto save it just reminds you to save uh, Captain's Log adds certain events in the game into a log report, into the Intel reports. So, uh, very handy. Console commands. So, if you like uh, consoles in a game, this adds the console to the game. Uh, Diable Avionics is a faction mod, so it adds a faction and all of the associated ships. Uh, DroneLib, this is one of the libraries. Okay. Uh, dynamic Tariffs. So normally when you're trading in the game, it's a fixed 30% tariff. So what this does, Dynamic Tariffs, is it takes your relationship with any given faction and then uses that as part of the equation to determine tariffs. So obviously if you're in good standing with them, uh, so standing relationships in the game can vary from negative 100 where they absolutely hate your guts uh, to a positive 100 and they want to marry you off to to their their uh, their children so knowing where your relationship is is very important to the various aspects of gameplay uh, as you really get into it the the relationships you want to kind of say eh, it doesn't matter but yeah actually they do uh, if you intend to do any trading around the sector um, then you have to be aware of your relationships uh, because after all those folks that you're trading with might like you or they might hate you and if they hate you uh, they're not going to trade with you so that's one of the problems so dynamic tariffs just changes things around so it's not a fixed static 30 percent it varies uh, according to your relationship which i thought was a great idea uh, ed shipyards is another um, it's not a faction mod it's actually just ships that it adds into the game uh, Grand Colonies, we talked about, um, so adds uh, 12 additional building slots to a colony. Pretty uh, self-explanatory as to what it does, even though that's really confusing. What the hell are building slots? Um, and we'll get into that. So adds an additional page, so that's why I use it. High-tech expansion, there are different classes of weapons, I'll, I'll say. I hate to use that word because I don't want to predestine you, but... Um, so there's low tech, there's mid grade, mid tech, and high tech are, are just three types. And, and those are introduced in the villain game. So this just adds some more high tech ships uh, and weapons to the game. Hostile intercept. This is a visual thing, so I consider this a utility. It is literally as you're traveling around, you're gonna come across other fleets and it will either give you a yellow warning when they're not real happy with you or a full-blown red bubble around them um, that says these guys don't like you at all they're either going to mess with you or otherwise hyperdrive another uh, must-have so uh, basically 
So it says it adds a campaign ability that uh, essentially allows you to teleport. I, you just got to play with it and see, play with it, see if you like it. Industrial Evolution, I talked briefly about this. So it basically just adds a, a lot of functionality into what you can do with your colonies, just features and, and abilities that you wouldn't normally have. Uh, there's a diplomacy, which because Nexarellon actually adds a diplomacy dynamic, then you may not use that in here, but still, it, it adds a lot of functionality. Interstellar Imperium, just another uh, mods and ships faction. Junkyard Dogs, same thing. Same thing. Uh, of course, I can't play any game without ultimately figuring out how to add my own mod into the game. So in this case, I've added uh, a couple ships uh, and a couple solar systems. And so the custom solar systems, that was the, the challenge, was figuring out how the heck to do that. Lazy Lib, another library. Leading Pip, so when you're in battles, it actually puts a pip on the screen in front of the vessel that you are trying to fight and says, if you shoot here, given your direction and speed and the other opposing ship's direction and speed, this will hit. So that's the idea. Logistics notifications, more ability, uh, in this case, fuel and supply notifications that says, hey, you're running out. Hey, you need more of this. Magic Lib, another library. Modern Carriers adds some hull mods specifically for carriers. Uh, Nexarellum, of course, we talked about this. This is just, I, I, I hesitate in calling it an overhaul because that's really kind of unfair to the devs, but uh, it does add an incredible amount of very useful functionality to the game. No such organization. This is, uh, again, another uh, faction, and uh, they've got ships, and so another faction mod. Uh, one Hall, this is uh, a mod of one of my buddies, uh, Unseen Oni. Uh, so uh, just trying to add, uh, as he says, uh, one Hall mod to rule them all. Asterisk Alliance, another faction mod. Outer Rim Alliance, another faction mod. Planet Search, all it does, as it says, adds a search box to the planet list. Hey, couldn't be more simple than that. Just what it says on the tin. Uh, Planetary Shield, this, uh, I'll let you read this one. This makes the shield into better stuff. Better stuff. Uh, resist inspection. So this is an actually outdated mod. Uh, it will not run unless you go into the game mod file and change it to match. But the script does still run. Uh, Hegemony AI. Uh, now you'll hear a bunch of different pronunciations of of Hegemony, H-E-G-E-M-O-N-Y. So pronounce that how you like. Uh, I pronounced it hegemony uh, because that's what it looks like given my understanding of grammar. But uh, call it what you like. Uh, anyway, those guys are, I don't know, the, the sector police for AI. And they will come after you and hunt you down if you uh, choose to use AI. So the problem is if you're on a good relationship level with the hegemony then you will cooperate with the inspection if you have any ais running in your colony that they are targeting they will take them and uh, so i don't like that um don't like that at all uh they are not the police of the galaxy i am the leader of my colony and you're not welcome here at all especially to take my ais so having said that um for whatever reason, it defaults to you will cooperate. So this forces the default to be resist. Okay, so the hegemony walks in. Now, here's the risk. The hegemony comes in, you are resisting them, they will instantly be hostile to you. You will drop by about 150 points. So if you are positive to them, let's say you're at 100, you're now at negative 50. Okay, so keep in mind that resisting their inspectors can can have some negative impacts so uh okay on we go um reuter union as in the asteroid workers union reuter uh, another faction mod 
Uh, shield holds for all. This introduces, as it says, uh, makes shielded cargo holds available to the player as a logistics hull mod. So you basically can put shielded holds onto your ships. Um, what do shielded holds do? Uh, arguable. Uh, what it appears to do is make it very, very difficult for anybody who stops you uh, to, to do a scan and actually reveal what you're carrying. So if you're a smuggler, uh, this is a must-have. What does speed up do? Adds a key binding to the game for speeding up. That's all it does. So it speeds up time by a certain increment, uh, and off you go. Super Weapons Arsenal, it is just what it says on the tin. It adds a Super Weapons Arsenal to the game as weapons that you can install on your ships. Terraforming and Station Construction, talked about this one earlier. Transfer All Items. Um, transfer All Items is just a shortcut that lets you move stuff back and forth uh, quickly. So uh, the problem is... Uh, it does have some bugs, some strange behaviors that, in, in a nutshell, the game was hard-coded, uh, and by hard-coded I mean it's in the code, as to where certain things are on the screen and the size of those things, specifically within the GUI, and when you're outside of those parameters, strange things happen. So if you're running at a lower resolution, strange things happen. If you're running at a higher resolution, less strange things happen because that window is fully there. It's just smaller on your screen, but it's still the same window. So basically, if you're at the HD resolution, um, 1920 by 1080, you're gonna be fine, but if you're anything outside of that, let me, let me back up, you're gonna be fine with HD or better because the window is the size of the window. If you're less than that resolution, the window will auto scale, but some of the hard coding did not. And so because this particular mod uses that hard code functionality, oops, things happen. So different function calls don't work quite right. Graphics lib. Another graphics library. So this is just a, a library specifically for graphics. Okay, so that's all the mods that I am using. Uh, so a bunch of faction mods, a couple weapons mods, and a bunch of utility stuff. So normally if you change anything, you're gonna have to do the save. Otherwise, we'll do a cancel, get back out to the screen. At this point, it's a play star sector and we are ready to go. Now one of the things you notice right off the bat is this is a windowed, bordered functionality. So in my case, because I'm running UHD, it had to run in a bordered mode for window. So it is a little bit annoying uh, having that bar up there without having, you know, the just pristine, uh, you know, screen there, but this is the sacrifice for running UHD in my case. So once it uh, winds and whirs a little bit, then you're going to come up to the main menu of the game, which is this. So it'll give you tips on the screen and then your main menu. When you're first starting a game, obviously your continue is going to be grayed out. That's not gonna be available to you. And then you will have a load game, even though that will be blank for you and new game. So new game obviously is starting a new game. If you have added any large scale functionality to the game uh, and let me make some generalizations here which will not always be true so look at the mod uh, they're going to tell you whether it's safe to install with a current game which which is to say a, a, a game that's currently in play or whether you have to start from new it will also tell you what will happen potentially if you remove the mod for whatever reason from your game. Will it destroy your save or will you be able to continue without it? Again, generalization here. Um, anything that adds ships or weapons to the game will probably be okay. 
Uh, now, if you happen to have any of those ships or weapons in your inventory somewhere, be it your fleet or whatever, uh, those normally will just disappear and everything will go on normally. But there is some risk. So uh, it, if you take any mod out, there is a certain potential for disaster. Um, so if you're removing a mod, if it's for a specific reason, great, fine and dandy, you might just do some testing. Remember what mod it is you're removing, remove it, open your game, test. If it loads up just fine, you're probably okay. Uh, otherwise, you can always put that one back on, finish that game out, and then remove from there. So remove at your own risk, but some of them absolutely will make your save unplayable until you add it back in. So you want to be careful which ones there go. So uh, in this case, you've got all these different things. You've got all your different settings, credits, quit, load game, uh, new game, missions that you can do outside, tutorials that you can do. And I highly recommend you go through these because it gives you a really good, uh, I'm you know, a little bit OCD, so I get really tuned in to a specific, these are the keys that work and I know what those keys are, and then I'm good. Um, so learning new knobology is always painful to me, which is why I don't play a whole lot of games, as you've seen by the content on the channel here. So missions, all the different missions you can do, tell you difficulty, what scores that you can beat, and then it will remember these. You just play missions, blah, blah, blah. So these are, are not really in the game. Um, they are using all of the material that you have in terms of mods, but you're not really in a save game per se. So, back to menu. Uh, tutorials? Tutorials are tutorials. Won't, won't go there. Codec is actually a really cool thing. So, it shows you all the different ship hulls, the variants which you might see for those hulls, the fighter wings, which is to say all the different fighters that might be housed in a fighter bay, all the different weapons, and all the different ship systems that you have available to you. So just uh, for example, you have all these different things that you, uh, if we look at the Atlas, and then the Atlas II, which doesn't really look a whole lot like the Atlas, looks like a completely different ship, but they call these the super freighters of the game. And there are other uh, very large scale freighters. Uh, I didn't find anything about the fuel capacity or cargo capacity to be super. So I made one, which is to say I took one of these ships and made it into something else. And we'll find that all the way down here. Let me just scroll down so you can see there's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of ships that you can play in the game. And right now, because I've got a lot of, of mods loaded, then these are all of the ships in the game. So if I go all the way down, way, way down here. course called the Tiger Super Freighter. You'll notice it looks pretty much the same because it is, but I just put totally spammed weapon turrets on here. So you also noticed I went completely off the deep end. Why? Because. One of the things I noticed, my frustration in the game is to, to really, so this is a me gameplay thing. I have to collect, if it's not bolted down, I have to pick it up and take it, okay? So that that's just everything that's salvageable, I have to salvage. The problem is with that philosophy is you run out of cargo space really, really quickly because most of the ships don't have any. So I made the super freighter to be all end all of all super freighters and this is it. So yes, indeedy, you are seeing on your screen um, 200, sorry, 25 million fuel capacity and 25 million cargo capacity. And in this case, I've got some bonuses. So these are bonuses because, um, so in this case it's uh, 750,000, I think. Let me count the zeros. Seven and a half million. Not, not sure what is causing that bonus, but seven and a half million. 
Um, I think that's actually Oni's one mod. And the maximum crew, 250,000. Now, why did I pick these numbers? Well, I wanted to be able to haul a lot of stuff around. And there's deficiencies that when you exceed fuel capacity versus how much fuel you have, crew capacity versus how much crew you have, cargo capacity versus how much cargo you have, it will slow down your fleet. And ultimately, it will slow them down to a crawl. And that's a total no-shitter. Um, so that's the other reason, you know, you can literally haul as much shit as you want in any fleet. The problem is, when you slow down to a crawl, it will take you... 20 days to get to something and it's okay this is way too slow so anyway this is why we brought you the tiger super freighter now before you ask is this mod available out there to the public no not there mostly because it is totally op purposefully op so not released out there yet i may ultimately release it but only a very few people have it um, the other thing that was in here was there's a Prometheus, which is arguably the best, um, uh, the, the best, oh, sorry, Prometheus, I'm, I'm in the wrong place. Uh, 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 nope, not the Prometheus. Starts with a P. I think Paragon. There we go. Paragon. See, it started with a P. Um, arguably the best of the capital ships in the game. Now, there are mods. This is vanilla. There are mods out there that have uh, ships that are better. Uh, and better is a delicate word because it's subjective. So... What you see as good versus best versus better uh, may be something different than what someone else will see. So this is vanilla now. Um, so arguably the best of the ships of the capital class uh, in the vanilla game. Now there is a second one that was introduced later on uh, that was also uh, within the game. Um, so it has some, uh, some neat stuff in it and then I took that very same ship and just spammed the hell out of weapons turrets uh, so you know and added a few other things so a little bit more cargo capacity a little bit more fuel capacity so you could actually do some stuff and added some crew space to it so you could actually use this uh, as a good uh, flagship and, uh, and get by with a lot of stuff so uh, this was the other ship that was uh, added into uh, by my my mod Kenti mod. Um, so the only other thing here, if I can find it, uh, salvage, salvage. We're looking for salvage. Salvage rig. There we go. So this is the vanilla salvage rig, which there's. Uh, two salvage rigs in the game. Um, there's a, a small salvage ship, and then there's uh, this larger salvage ship, which uh, which has some extra capabilities. And the extra capabilities really just show up as a bonus. So if you get 100% probability uh, for salvage, I mean, you will get everything within that salvage stash. Now, there's negatives, there's positives. So if it's negatives, then the game has this is what's in this, and if it's a negative, then you get 75% arbitrary number, 75% uh, of that. So if you have a negative 25% somewhere, then you'll only get 75% of that. In this case, uh, you might get a bonus to that, and you will get whatever the game says, this is your base, and you'll get extra. So however much, let's say 25%. So 125%, you get extra 25 percent so good stuff uh, in my case I didn't make any changes as to the bonuses otherwise but I did add a couple turrets on there and added shields so normally this thing uh, is not shielded uh, I also added some fuel capacity uh, so if we go to the salvage rig 
you'll see it has zero fuel capacity, zero cargo capacity. So it just dumps that into the rest of the fleet, whatever that happens to be. So I actually added quite a bit of both cargo and fuel capacity. Now, fuel capacity, this is one of the reasons I wanted to babble a little bit here. Um, it's important to understand in this game that as you're looking at ships, it's not that your cargo goes to that ship. So this total number is what you have in your fleet, right? Your fleet could be one ship. It could be 20 ships. It could be up to 30 ships, which is the maximum number by the base game. Now, you can change that number. You can change a lot of these numbers. But 30 is the vanilla maximum that you can have in your fleet. So it basically takes all the fuel capacity combined of your entire vessels in the fleet, and that is your fuel storage capacity. The same thing for cargo capacity. It's a sum total. What does that mean? Well, I can buy a boatload of fuel, dump it in. It's evenly distributed. Use your imagination here. Uh, it's evenly distributed above, uh, among everybody. And there's not, you don't have to move fuel from here to there. It's just evenly distributed. It says this is your maximum number, this is how much you have, and on you go with the game. So cargo, crew, and fuel are all about that number, combined total, distributed evenly. Okay. So just to understand what fuel capacity is. So in this case, 10,000, does that mean that my first 10,000 goes to this? No, it just adds on to the total fuel capacity of your fleet, whatever that happens to be. One ship, five ships, 30 ships, doesn't matter. So cargo capacity, maximum crew. Uh, skeleton crew does actually come into play as well. That's the minimum number of crew you have to maintain before your ships start suffering and fuel capacity. Maximum burn is another important thing. It's kind of hard to understand what that really means, but maximum burn is the fastest that this ship can go. In the end, your fleet has a maximum burn of the slowest ship. Okay, let me, let me say that again a different way. The weakest link in the chain, right? The slowest ship is the speed of your fleet. Your fleet is a fleet. It's always going to stay together, meaning the slowest ship is the fastest you can go. So keep that in mind when you're looking for ships, buying ships and that sort of thing. Uh, all this other information, there's a lot of good uh, pages that tell you what all this stuff is. So. I'm not going to go into a lot of that, but understanding what the armor rating, what hull integrity is, defenses, whether it's shields or uh, phase, those are the two types of, of things that you can run into, what the flux capacity is. All those things are, are stuff that I'm not going to get into here, mostly because that's really... Here's another ship flying across the screen here. That's, that's a mod ship. That's out of, uh, I think, ED shipyards. ED Shipyards, I think, is where that one is. Um, so for what that's worth. Okay, so uh, exiting out of uh, the Codex. Uh, the Codex is just a database of everything that you can do uh, with, well, uh, all the vessels and weapon systems and all that sort of thing that you can play with in the game. All right, so... Without further ado, I'm going to continue. It's going to load up the game that I've got going. This is uh, what you would consider a late, late, late game. Um, so this is... Um, now, one of the neat features, it starts paused. Which, so, yeah, if you have to go and get that cup of tea, you can do that and not have to worry about, okay, while you were uh, getting your cup of tea, uh, the the your, your leading rival faction came in and bombed the snot out of you, and you're all done. So uh, that can't happen. Uh, when you first load the game, it's going to start in paused. Uh, now, most of the functionality of the game still works. You can go into your command. You can go into Intel. You can go into the map, which is exactly what we're going to do. So map, it shows you here on the bottom of the screen. C, F for fleet, R for refit. 
those are both interrelated. So your fleet is your kind of overview of your fleet. The refit is your fleet, but you get into specific vessels and you can make changes on those specific vessels, being weapons, hull mods, anything like that. Crew and cargo, crew and cargo, right? Mostly cargo. Um, you don't really pay attention to your crew very much in there, but cargo. Uh, map. This is the map of not only the system you're in, which is the solar system, but the sector, which is all the solar systems available to you in that particular game. They are randomly generated for the most part. Uh, so, um, map. Intel, uh, we'll get into Intel in a bit. Command is, we'll get into that one in a bit too. I won't go into that now. But let's go into the map just so you can see. Uh, so map, which is your tab. So we push tab and we roll into, okay, right click, uh, we'll, we'll drag, right click and hold, we'll let you drag. So uh, let me zoom in here to about the maximum thing. You can see this is a really, really busy map. A um, lot of stuff going on here. This is my, uh, this is in my mod. This is a solar system that I just wanted to figure out how to do this. And uh, so it's arguably OP. There's a lot of resources right here in this system. So I looked at it and said, this is kind of a starting system that will give you everything you need to survive. Uh, it's all right here. Uh, it'll take you a while to get there. Um, one of the reasons I say this is a, a late game is this map, every planet that's here, there's like 12 of them. Um, there's four of those that are actually habitable as is. And then if you do the terraforming and stations mod, then you can actually terraform a bunch. Uh, there's a gate here, which will, you'll eventually uh, get to use. And so lots and lots of stuff here. And I have colonized everything. So that's why I say this is late game. Um, and we'll get into what that really means here in a bit. So uh, the reason I picked this map this save game was because I want to be able to show you some of these things and kind of walk you through the GUI, which is the whole idea. So you've got two options on this screen, which if you haven't looked up in that top left corner, you have system, which is where we're at. So system, what does system mean? Solar system. That's what we call these groups of stars and planets uh, is the system the solar system that you happen to be in, represented by usually a single star, but that's not necessarily the case, and the planets which orbit that star. In this case, we've got a whole bunch of planets. We actually have planets that are in orbit of other planets uh, and several groups of that. We have actually uh, three groups of that kind of planet uh, orbiting planet thing. So we have the main habitable planets here, which is uh, Samson. Uh, so for those of you who are really curious, um, all of the names in here are some of the big cats that I've worked with in the past. So all of them got names, uh, including some of the long, long time ago. So Shasta was the first Puma that I worked with. Um, Dash Guy was the first uh, Siberian Tiger I worked with. Uh, Kenty is here. Kenty, of course, is my name, and uh, you've heard me babble enough to know Kenty was the first tiger that I really, really worked with, uh, Bengal tiger. So Kenty, of course, is, well, not Kenty. Kenty's not really here. I'm here. Um, this is an irradiated planet. I, I thought the irony of that would be, uh, would be funny. So I'm, I'm abrasive, uh, not irradiated, but, well, arguably. So, um, so uh, Samson, uh, Shasta is uh, orbiting Samson. So that's one of the orbit. Uh, we have uh, Java out here and we have uh, Jumanji and Sage are orbiting uh, Java. We have Genesis here, another tiger I've worked with. Uh, Nemesis, uh, Nemers is, uh, is orbiting uh, Genesis. Uh, Kenti is way out here in an orbit all by itself. We have a couple that are that way, uh, Dagger uh, over here. Uh, we have uh, Dash Guy in the very center and Sarista, which is a little further out, uh, are the two closest uh, planets. So Dash Guy is another uh, irradiated planet, which is completely the opposite of what, what he was just a, 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 a gentle monster, I'll call him. Uh, Siberian Tiger, so he was really big, but the most friendly guy that you could ever possibly meet. 
So anyway, uh, babble, babble. Uh, dagger over here, uh, and then all the different planets that, uh, you know, so there's a, um, Samson is a desert planet. Um, so Samson, um, who eventually was called Drifter, uh, was a uh, Texas subspecies puma. So uh, loved, didn't, didn't have any trouble with heat. So desert planet. Uh, the Shasta was a uh, uh, Terran planet. Um, this was a jungle planet, Vishnu, who was uh, Makumba, um, so leopard. So blah, 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 on, it, on and around. Um, so as we uh, go out, uh, let's just pick uh, Shasta is right here. Um, so I'm going to uh, set course for Shasta. We're going to use that as a, I'm uh, right here coming flying inbound if I zoom you uh, mouse wheel is uh, zoom in and zoom out now you you notice these are all red uh, there's a quest called the red planet it's actually a very short quest you go to uh, uh, three different places and uh, it introduces you to the planetary shield the planetary shield can do an awful lot of things for you and I won't uh, steal the thunder out of the game but so to find that shield, you are going to the dockside bar and you're looking for um, an old spacer. So if you see any of them with an old spacer, uh, then that is very likely um, the, uh, the trigger for this. And there, there's a lot of variants uh, to what that old spacer is, but in the end, that is the seed for the red planet quest which will get you the blueprint for planetary shields which the, you can then build onto your colonies so this is the menu of getting into your colony this will go to different places uh, so the IFR here in this case is um, well we can try them all um, I is just your main inventory see what F goes to goes to your fleet and R is refit yeah so you can get to any of those from there but manage colony is the is the one that you're normally going to do uh, special functions is part of um, it, it's part of the industrial evolution mod uh, examine terraforming op options is part of your terraforming and stations mod uh, and then everything else is vanilla. So leave, uh, repair, manage, take a shuttle, and open the comm is all part of the vanilla game. So uh, in this case, manage colony is where you want to go. Uh, you open up to your normal uh, colony screen here. Um, you have several options, resources stockpile, which is actually what this is. So this is the this is where all of the excess stuff will go and come out of if your colony needs it. Anything that's excess can be sold. Uh, anything that is uh, uh, a deficit will be taken from these piles. Are, are, are these piles fake? Yes, they are. Um, so this is, I, I just consoled this in as my standard uh, operational package and bleh, dump it here. So uh, open market. So the advantage to commerce is that you can buy and sell on an open market. This, this market happens to be, um, I, I think this is just a function built in, the independents. Um, so the independents are a faction in and of themselves that are like a conglomerate of, of smaller groups but they're called the independents. So the, basically the independents make up the independents faction. So for what that's worth. So that you can buy on the open market and you can buy anything that you need up and, to, up and including weapons, uh, fighters, uh, and fighters aren't just fighters. There's, there's different types of fighters. So from the interceptor type fighter, which is the guy who goes out and, and blows shit up, uh, you have the utility fighters, which are actually responsible for um, protecting your ship, whatever it happens to be, and then the bombers, which actually go out to the targets. 
um, and, and blow things up. So all of this stuff, all the different weapons that you can buy as you find them and need them, that sort of thing. Um, but all the different, so supplies. Your fleet needs supplies and fuel and crew. Those are the three things that you absolutely have to have. Uh, those are what you see over here. Cargo capacity, which is your supplies, your crew. There's a minimum number of crew that you absolutely have to have. And fuel. Obviously, if you run out of fuel, you're going to be in a world of hurt because you can't go anywhere. So uh, definitely not a good thing to run out of fuel. Uh, your beginning game can be very challenging because having the appropriate number of supplies and fuel to get to where you need to go to get more supplies and fuel is a challenge. So the idea and one of the reasons I made the freighter was at every stop I buy everything I can afford. Now you notice here I have 1.3 billion in credits. Uh, like I said, this is late game, so I can afford anything I want. So what I normally do, this is control, by the way. Control, left click, will take that whole stack, in this case, transplutonics, so think plutonium, um, will take the whole stack. So control, click, will take the whole stack. Shift, left click, hold, will bring up a scaler. And you can drag and how many you want. So that was 70. I'm going to ultimately take 70. Um, if you just do a shift left click, you'll take one. Left click two. Left click three. Okay. So if you click and hold. Uh, let me put those back down. If you click and hold, you'll get. Oh, sorry. Excuse me. Click and hold. You'll get the drag bar that you can then adjust. And nor the, the most I've seen is the 5,000. So if you're anything less than 5,000, depending on what the commodity actually is, uh, then you're going to pick up the whole thing. In this case, I buy it all. So I use the control key. Buy it all. Buy it all. So no matter where I am, uh, I will patronize the, uh, the trading institution and buy all of the commodities. Now, what do you need in your fleet? supplies fuel and crew now if you're going to go out and do raids uh try and take over somebody else's colony anything like that you're going to need marines um, the other thing that you really need in your fleet is heavy machinery everything uses a certain amount of heavy machinery there is a certain percentage possibility that the machinery will be damaged during use which means you'll lose it so you want to take um, as much heavy machinery as you can fit in your cargo. Uh, metals. metals. Metals is used for everything when you're building. So mm, you don't do a lot of building, but metals is something you need. You can also trade them. Um, you, you need transplutonics for different items um, not a lot but you do need some so having some of those is a good idea so having some metal uh, having some transplutonics great idea having some volatiles also a good idea um, so a couple of scan functions uh, your neutrino scanner for example runs this is the fuel for that so you want to have some of this stuff out there. Now, what you do not use in your fleet uh, is organics. Organics are a trade item that you need to develop um, food. Um, let me see what else. Organics also becomes domestic goods and luxury goods, which are a trade commodity. Uh, the lobsters are a trade commodity. Um, heavy armaments uh, and ship hulls and weapons are part of building uh, when you get to building ships. Um, so those are 
a trade commodity as well. You do not need them in your fleet necessarily, but, you know, nice to have. Um, these are the two ores. So the regular ore, which becomes metal, and your transplutonic ore, which becomes transplutonics. So this is to smelt them down into those different things. So what I used to do uh, is buy all this and then I carry it to uh, one of my colonies that does refining. And then as I have a, uh, a deficit, it will take from those piles and refine it to make sure I'm you know, producing everything I can produce. Uh, does it really work that way? Don't know. It appears to, but don't know. So uh, usually once you really get established in the game and get your mining up and running really well, um, then, you know, it, it doesn't really use those anymore because you're actually mining enough um, that you're not uh, using out of your own supplies. But one of the things, one of the choices you make when we talk about colonies and we're going to go into the colony stuff, uh, let me see, I'm at an hour now, I'm going to keep going um, just so we keep this all together. But I'll show you where this having the ores can actually come in handy. This is from um, I'm trying to remember which one this is from. I think this is from the industrial uh, evolution mod, uh, which are your ship components, which are things that you can get when you um, dismantle ships and used in building other ships and your rare relic components which are used in other technologies and in building. So having these is, is a good idea. AI cores, this is what your, uh, there's a lot of different uses um, and if you get into the game lore, I won't go into a lot of the detail, but these are in many factions forbidden items um, so you may or may not run into problems with other factions by the use of those. Um, this is another mod. It, it, this is actually um, in the industrial, uh, sorry, the, um, the terraforming and stations mod. This is part of that one. Uh, drugs and harvested organs are, for the most part, um, illegal trade items um, so you can either smuggle them at a, a really decent cost <laughs> really decent price um, but there is always the risk of you running into some policing faction uh, who will um, be of more significance than your own fleet and they will take these things from you um, these are the three fighter types that I use in the games. These are, are their one's high tech remnant, which is, eh, you'll, you'll figure out. Uh, so both of these are high tech. So these are arguably the best of the best in the vanilla game. Uh, there are others which are, are good outside of that. Um, million in uh, supplies. Why? Because I can carry them. So I always keep Two million supplies besides the the pot that I'm working on here uh, and two million in fuel besides the pot I'm running on here so those are my reserves because the super freighter is such a super freighter sorry had to do the pun um, I can hold that so I always keep that in reserve that way I am realistically never out of fuel but as you can see here on the open market I just buy everything anyway so once I reach a million, then I store that somewhere else. Uh, all the different things that we have. So here's, uh, so there are actually three different types of AIs. This is your base model AI, uh, affectionately called the Gamma AI. Um, I am in Shasta, so, okay. So let me finish here. You notice there's a, quite a tally here. There's a certain amount of tariffs. I'm on pretty good relations. Uh, with the independence, so my tariff is at 6%, which is pretty low. That's the uh, dynamic tariffs mod that's doing that. Um, 
So before you can get off any of these singular screens when you've done something, you have to either confirm or abort. If you abort, then everything you moved uh, will go back where it was. If you confirm, it will stay there with this uh, hefty price tag, which obviously $4 million when you have several billion or $1.3 billion. Uh, it doesn't really matter. So I'm just going to click confirm. Then you have uh, these guys. So resources, again, are what the colony has available to it. Uh, open market is literally the open market. That's what's available to me for purchase on the market. Storage is my stuff. So this is all the stuff that I have brought here. So I keep 50 alpha cores, which are the, the really intelligent ones, um, the human-like cores. Um, so I keep 50 of them here and the rest of them I keep here. Uh, you can find these as you're battling through the galaxy. If you find an old um, mining station, you have a possibility of finding them. If you battle with the remnants, um, nine times out of ten, uh, the large capital ships of the remnant groups will have uh, an alpha AI core. Uh, any of the, they call it the nexus which are effectively the remnant stations. Uh, so the remnants are entirely AI. Uh, so they're left over from the domain era. Um, so you will come across the remnants. They're part of an old game, so you will, you will find them. Um, some of the smaller ships have a possibility of having the gammas. Some of the medium-sized ships, some of the cruisers and that sort of thing have the possibility of a beta core. Um, and the stations... The Nexus station, guaranteed to have one. Uh, I think that's, I, I've never battled. Now, those are tough. Okay, so you're not going to walk right into the game, find a Nexus, and take it on and win. Okay, it will stomp the snot out of you. Um, so once you have a reasonably large fleet, large capable fleet, then you will be able to take on uh, a Nexus with, with no problems. Um, well, it may be a challenge. But in the end, you will get your alpha because that station is controlled by an alpha AI core. So, AI yeah, cores. Um, all of these, um, there are special items which as you build your colonies, uh, and we'll get into those uh, in a little more detail in a minute, um, you can add items to certain industries built on your colonies, and they will add bonuses uh, to those particular industries. So that's, uh, that's what some of these specials actually are. There's uh, two types of forges, nanoforges. Um, so the pristine nanoforge, pristine, it's in good shape. The corrupted, not so good shape. So if you look here, increases, uh, bottom paragraph there, sorry, uh, increases ship and weapon production quality by 20%. Whereas if you look at the pristine, uh, production quality by 50%, right? Increases heavy industry production by three units versus increases by one unit. Okay, so it's still useful. It's corrupt, but it's still useful versus the pristine. Uh, all these different things have different functions depending on where you put them and what some of the planet capabilities are. What are these other piles here? Uh, obviously, I've collected for a while. These are all the different weapons that I use. All of these are available in vanilla. Now, uh, you can go, there's a lot of videos on YouTube. There's a lot of discussion on the forums, on, on the uh, uh, Fractical Softworks forum site that, that will discuss for you what are the best weapons in the game. And to a certain degree, there's a lot of subjectivity there, obviously. Uh, my favorites are all of these. Uh, and the reason I picked a lot of these was some diligent research on my own part to decide what are the best weapons to use. Now, I have not played with the super weapons. <laughs> I, I loaded the mod in. Uh, I've seen them in the game. I have not yet played with them and used them because obviously super weapons are super weapons. So they'll be fun to play with. But on the other side, they'll be not so fun because you just basically go up against somebody, you kick the snot out of them, and then it's over. Um, so if you get into a game specifically for getting into some battle, getting into a scrape with them, uh, go toe-to-toe -to -toe and, and beat the snot out of somebody, then might not be quite as fun afterwards. So 
Uh, that's why I use these. These are all uh, all vanilla weapons. All ten of these. Um, this is introduced in the uh, expand um, industrial evolution mod. All these uh, down here uh, are what those. These guys are actually all vanilla. This is all. I think there's eleven, twelve of them, twelve of them um, in the in the vanilla game. So these are all vanilla up here. Uh, the cores are all vanilla. Uh, these are uh, all vanilla. These are all vanilla. So we we are are now into the mods down here with these guys. Some of these are uh, are are so mod that they don't even they're not even installable in anything yet. So it's it's basically the evolution of a mod. Um, so the the author of the mod has not actually integrated them. They they built the items, but they haven't integrated them in just yet. All right, so um, survey data. As you're uh, going around, and we'll, we, we might actually have the time to go around. I, I do kind of want to show you that, but survey data. Um, so won't, won't go into, we have class one through class five. Um, so here's a class two, class one. So um, the differentiation between all of those is really how much data they contain. Now, one of the things that was was said to me the other day, and I have not verified this, depending on who you s sell this information to, they may use that and say, hmm, this would make a good colony world. So they go there because you gave them the data. So be careful of that. So as far as I can tell, the class is about what type of planet it is. So the most useful, which is an inhabitable planet, will generally give you uh, a class five survey. So that's generally speaking, I don't really truly understand how all the different classes function. Um, but uh, again, as you see here uh, at the bottom, oops, the data contained herein is entirely unremarkable, just another rock. Okay, so that that's really kind of the usability the the overall value so you basically sell these and you know you get what you need uh, fighters uh, this is a blueprint so as you are roaming around there's a couple different places you can find blueprints ruins and as you travel uh, and and you survey planets you will find planets that have ruins uh, ruins can be very beneficial in a lot of ways. You will find relics, uh, you will find blueprints, you will find all kinds of stuff that, that may be very, very helpful. The nice thing about the packages, which is what this particular thing is, um, so this is from the Imperial Elite, uh, the Imperium um, faction. Uh, so this is one of their blueprints. Um, so this is looks like their upper end blueprint na, 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 na. On spec. so improves and changes the behavior of ship systems when installed so these are hull mods um, what else do they have yeah this is about hull mods so so anyway um, so knowing all of these you have to know a blueprint before you can build it into a ship or add it onto a ship so the idea is that blueprints, uh, especially in this case, become very, very important as you are traveling and searching the galaxy. When you find these things, you want to learn them. You see at the bottom of the screen, there's that, that green line that says right click to learn. So I do not know this yet, but I have this package now, which means if I right click, which we're gonna do, You'll see it disappear, and now I will know all this stuff. If you see it in white, you do not know it yet. If you see it grayed out or in the gray text, it means you know it. You can find partials where you have one or two items that you know, and this is the package deal, which has all of them. So basically, everything you see here in white, when I right-click, I will now know it. I've learned it because of this device. So 
The reason it's 15,000 credits is because, hey, it's got a certain amount of value. So knowledge value. So right click, and now we know that. You see it disappears out of my uh, inventory. So uh, other weapons. So the weapons, so heavy ballista launcher. This is an Imperium weapon, and it tells you about what that does. So this is a large missile. So there's three different sizes and three different types generally uh, of a weapon. It can be either be large, medium, or small. Mm -hmm. That took a little bit to figure out, right? It can be a missile, which is, hey, a missile. Uh, it can be a ballistic, which is some kind of projectile that it is shooting, be it a rail or conventional projectile, um, or energy, like a laser something okay so energy missile or ballistic are the three basic types um ordnance points ordnance points become very very important because any given vessel has x number of ordnance points so you may have 10 turrets on this particular ship but you have 200 ordnance points available on the ship meaning if i put every time i add a turret i subtract from my ordnance points when i add a hull mod i subtract from so eventually my ordnance points gets to zero i'm done i cannot do anything else with this ship i can move stuff around i can add hull mods i can take hull mods off I can add weapons, I can take weapons off, but in the end I have X number of ordnance points. So this basically says this is the most you can modify this ship. So the number of ordnance points becomes extremely important when you're choosing ships of your fleet. When you're first starting out, you really don't care. It, it's, I, I gotta have more ships. And that's all fine and dandy. but all of those ships have a limitation in ordnance points. Every ship has X number of ordnance points. When you're at zero, that's it. There's nothing more you can do other than you can interchange. You can take stuff off, put other stuff on, uh, which you will. But over time, as you look, the size of a ship matters from the perspective of what's its armor class, what's its flux rating, what's its damage capability, what's its shield capability, which are all part of the vessel. But the number of ordnance points becomes really, really important because that's how many weapons you can have, that's, many, that's how many hull mods you can have, that sort of thing. So that's going to become much, much more important to you. If you have a little dinky tiny ship that has a boatload of ordnance points, you can do an awful lot with it as long as it has you know, enough turrets to actually make it worth something. So look at all these things. It's a global package. It's, it's a big package deal that when you're looking at a vessel, um, when you get into the mid game and the advanced game to the late game, you're really looking at those sorts of things. You're, you're much more picky about the ship and what it brings to the table and what you can do with it versus the weapons that you want to use. So these are the things that, that become exceedingly important. So ordnance points, this is a missile, large, so you need a large turret. You need a large turret that can handle a missile. And there's five different types of turrets that you're going to deal with. You're going to deal with an energy uh, turret, which can only deal with energy weapons. You're going to deal with in fact, let me look this up real quick so I'm not speaking off the cuff. Um, excuse me, my, my silence here. Um, turret uh, types. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm doing a, uh, a forum search here um, as to what the different turret types are because I don't want to speak out of turn here. Okay, so we have the three basic types of turrets that I talked about. We have ballistic, we have energy, and we have missile. Um, 
those particular turrets can only handle those respective weapons types. Okay, but we have some mixes. Okay, so we have what's called a composite, a synergy, and a hybrid. And those are mixes. So the hybrid, for example, can deal with ballistic and energy. Hybrid, ballistic, and energy. Composite is a ballistic and missile. Composite, ballistic, and missile. Synergy is energy and missile. Synergy, energy, and missile. Universal, which is kind of rare, can take everything. Doesn't matter what type of weapon you put on it, it will take everything. So the idea and understanding those, those really six different types, seven technically, uh, different types of turrets that can handle all the different types of weapons ultimately. So that's another thing to look for in your late late game ships. So weapons, all the different weapons, sorry, get back into the game so it will actually bring these up, windows up. So like with a lot of things, when you hover over an item, it will actually bring up the information menu about the item. So you can see what all these different things are. These are the different fighters. So LPC is all of your different fighters. So everything is going to be an LPC of one kind or another. So again, the three different fighters that you're going to find are the, the interceptors, which actually go out and do damage. Uh, you have the what's affectionately called the utilities that actually are, they're going to intercept other fighters. They are there to protect whatever ship that they're being deployed from. Um, and then you have bombers which go out and actually bomb the target that, that you're aiming at. So those are the three different types of wings that they're, they're called in this game. So the fighter wings. Okay, so this is your inventory menu. But let's look at some of the other stuff. Colony info, we're going to get into that. Stability is an important thing. Um, the higher the stability of your colony, the faster it will grow. That's not necessarily the only thing that that is relevant to, but um, access. What is access? Accessibility is how easily can other fleets, allied fleets, come and trade with you. So obviously the higher this number, the better. Okay. In this case, I'm at 222%. So I'm about twice uh, the normal uh, ability. So hostilities with other factions, that's my only negative at this point, which you're, you're never going to have everybody at 100%. Um, so because I'm below zero for a couple of the factions, pirates... Uh, actually, I don't think pirates actually play a, a large role here. Um, but it's it's other major factions that you're dealing with that once you have hostilities with them. Pirates, you're always going to be hostile with them. Um, you know, anywhere from 70, mi minus 70, uh, to minus 100. And you can do things, actually, to improve your relationship with the pirates. Um, but, you know, pirates offer bounties, too. So you complete a bounty successfully, and they'll they'll do it. Um, fleets. What does fleets really mean? Um, fleet size and ship quality within your fleet. So my fleets are protecting me. So 100% means I have the 100% availability. This is an arbitrary number. Um, but 100% availability. So in this case, I have nearly 500%. So I have five times the number of fleets protecting this uh, colony than would be considered the base norm, right? 475%. Defenses, what is this? Well, if I carry 100 Marines, then I have effectively a 16th of what I need to walk in and do something, right? So you want this as high as you can possibly get it. Uh, there are some downsides. Dome cities, for example, add a lot of plus. Um, to uh, mostly they drop hazards down and we'll get into hazards in a second here um, but 
they have a very small percentage you can see this is you know five percent um of of a detriment because obviously you a dome city is a pretty damn big thing so you hit it anywhere and you're going to crack the dome and you have problems um so anyway um page one so we talked about we'll we'll, we'll get into that the colony conditions condition is an interesting word this is the features of this colony Okay, so this is true on every colony, whether it be a station or otherwise, you're always going to see colony conditions. What is colony conditions? Well, these are all the different things that apply to this particular colony. It's habitable. Good thing. I can breathe the air. Um, it has a mild climate. Um, mild climate, extreme weather. Those are the two comparative options. Uh, we have a certain amount of organic material that we use to build other things. So we can turn that into food. We can further uh, turn that into domestic goods or luxury goods. So we can use organics for a lot of different things. So plentiful organics. Um, Ultra-rich uh, ore deposits, meaning there's a whole lot of them. These are ores. So these are all of your metals. Okay. So this directly translates into, let me scroll this up. To these guys okay metals um, ultra rich rare ores so rare ores as you would imagine are the rare ores uh, so rare earth elements if you imagine which ends up transplutonics okay farmland farmland is pretty important because you go directly to food you don't pass go you don't collect two hundred dollars go directly to food so good, good stuff to have on a colony planet. Ruins, that's what this is. Uh, I happen to have the orbital reflectors up. The orbital reflectors in the case of this particular planet don't actually make a difference other than um, they add to my food bonus. So what you see is increases food production by two. Okay, so great stuff. So that's why I have those on there. What does 10 mean? 10 is the population size of this particular planet. Now, what does that mean? It's an arbitrary number. Um, as it says here, home to tens of billions of humans. Okay, so eh, whatever that means. So you have populations when you first found is going to be a three. You will slowly build over time. You have things which can be to your advantage and things that will be to your disadvantage. Uh, that can increase or decrease this particular number, ultimately the growth rate of your planet. What does this mean? This is my free trade. So Freeport, it, as it says here, it's a minus three to stability. Now, is that really a problem when your colony is smaller? Yes, it does matter a lot because as stability goes down, your growth goes down proportionally. So if it's not growing, you're not increasing this number here. You want to get this number, this population number up, because this is part of your income, part of everything that your colony does. So free, tr free trade is a good thing and it's a bad thing. It increases population growth, but in the counter of that, it decreases stability because you could have so let, let's go ahead and read this. The local port authority imposes almost no regulation on what cargo is traded. Immigration controls are likely, likewise relaxed. Exactly why population is higher. Resulting in a greater inflow of people, albeit sometimes of a more questionable character. This may cause other factions to view this colony with distrust. Haven't run into that so much, but... Um, so the other thing is this colony does not require the transponder to be turned on for open trade. All commodities are legal to trade. Okay, so the good news is population goes up. Good news is accessibility goes up. Downside minus three on stability. So this is something you want to consider at the beyond beginning game. Okay, you don't want any negatives on your stability when you're first forming colonies when you get up to five then you might consider this 
by that time you will likely have other items that can add to your stability eventually you will have enough stability points that a minus three or a minus four don't matter at all so you can see here if i mouse over stability i have a bunch of stuff so let's look at all these from top to bottom plus two so there's two four five ten eleven twelve thirteen fifteen uh eighteen 21 okay so i have 21 pluses in this case i have minus three to freeport doesn't matter minus three to commerce doesn't matter okay so i've got 21 total so a minus three and a minus three don't matter at all i'm still at 10 because you want a 10 10 is the max so if i have 21 i can lose 11 and still be a 10 <laughs> so the idea is you want to have the pluses outweigh the minuses. So eventually that minus three on the free port doesn't matter at all. Okay, so let's uh, look uh, flags. We talked about flags. So these are the different flags. There's the bazillion flags out there. There's flag mods. So this was, I believe it's one of the vanilla, but it might not be. It might actually be part of the Nexorellin. Okay, uh, we stopped. So free port. Um, Regional capital. I inserted this on there because I have no idea how to get it. This is my regional capital, so eh, it doesn't do anything, uh, at least that I can tell. So a major center of administration, security, and logistics, which is true. Uh, does it actually improve? Uh, it does. It gives you a plus two region capital. Is that top one there? So not sure how that is actually inserted on there uh, i i just physically shoved it on there okay so page one and two we'll get we'll get to this so colony info what does colony info mean so who is my administrator normally i can click on here i'm going to go ahead and do that just so you can see so these are all the administrators that are available kenty is me okay so shouldn't shouldn't be a surprise um these are the facial images, which you can do mods for these two. So these are the faces, okay? So these are the profile pictures that you can use. Um, all of these happen to be vanilla. Um, so administrators you will gain as you float around the galaxy. You can find them at stations when you go into the comms. You'll find, you know, administrator for hire, freelance administrator. You can hire them. Um, so that's where all these, all three of these, I happen to get um, part of my zooming around the galaxy was um, I would uh, stumble across ships, derelict vessels, and occasionally you will find cargo pods and these guys are in stasis in the cargo pods. So you basically get them. So all three of these I actually got from being in stasis cargo pods. Um, a lot of my pilots were, the, or my officers uh, are the same. So, administrators, uh, I use Alpha Core, uh, Alpha Cores as my administrator because uh, they're more efficient. They give you pluses that you wouldn't get otherwise. Um, so let's uh, population and infrastructure. This is your base colony. You will always have this. If that is destroyed, your colony is done. Um, so this will always be there. These industries, um, so page one, you can see here I've got 12 items on here. And I'll come back to some of what these are. Q, uh, this is the Grand Colonies mod, Grand Colonies. It gives you an extra 12 slots. Okay, so that's that's what that, that does for you. So in this case, okay, I've got 12 more. Um, so I was hoping that there would be uh, one slot extra. We'll have to find another colony that does not have 24 uh, industries all built in here. So what are all of these? One of the things you notice, um, let, me, let me go back to the original just so we can see. Um, population infrastructure, you can left click or right click on this. It's gonna take you to the same place. It's gonna bring up a menu. Uh, make improvements uh, you will do later. They cost you story points. Manage AI core. So you start out with nothing on this, and then you get to choose what you want to put in. And I've got a shit ton of, of 
cores that, that I've found over the course of time because you can find them in, in a lot of different places. In this case, I put the alpha core in there because you get these bonuses. You can see here on the screen, so alpha level AI core reduces upkeep costs by 25%. That becomes extremely significant. Uh, reduces demand by one unit, which means whatever that industry happens to be, it's going to use one unit less of everything it needs. So if it needs three things, three different things, it's going to use one less of each of those things. Increase production by one unit. If it produces three different commodities, it's going to increase production of each of those commodities by one. So this, this can be really, really interesting. So gamma level reduces demand. Obviously it's a good thing, but that's all that one does. Um, beta level, it reduces upkeep costs by 25% and reduces demand by one. So they give you different features according to is it gamma, is it beta, is it alpha. So your consideration. Now here's the downside to using AIs in your colonies. There are two factions which utterly hate AIs. The Ludic Path not to be confused with the Ludic Church. Ludic Church will, for the most part, leave you alone. Um, they're, they're not necessarily a vendetta against you. Uh, if you go out of your way to be annoying to them, they will do the same in, in return. The Ludic Path will seek out industrialization, heavy industrialization, uh, which is your heavy industry or your orbital works, and your AIs. So if you use a lot of AIs, they will take an interest in you and they will eventually put uh, terrorist cells, they, they're actually called terrorist cells, uh, in your colonies. And they, they don't really do a lot. Um, you won't notice a huge thing. They will take away points for stability. So in my case, for example, we saw we had 21 points of stability. What is one or two or three or five points that a terrorist cell is going to take from you actually do at this stage in the game? Absolutely nothing. So they play no role at all when they get, you know, when, when you get to this stage in the game. But why did I pick this particular save game? Because I wanted to be able to show you what some of these were and actually have enough on the screen that, that I can really discuss in detail you will eventually see these things. So this is your selection of the administrator. In this case, we selected the AI core. I, I love the alphas because they just have a lot of feature. And each item in this case can do something. There is some plus to having an AI core and they're, they're independent. You'll, you'll see them change. This is 25, reduces demand by one. Uh, farming looks the same, looks the same, looks the same. Let's go to uh, high command. So we see a little bit different. Upkeep cost still 25, reduced demand still one, which is great stuff. Increases fleet size by 1.25%, meaning about 25%. So if I have a fleet of 10 vessels, it's now a fleet of 12 vessels. 12 and a half, 12 and a half vessels. Okay, so you get the idea. So you now have more protection. Um, what do all these things do? And we'll go over these briefly and I'll try and describe whether they're vanilla or not. So population infrastructure, not, not a mod. This is vanilla game. Every colony has this one. It's, it's, I won't say it's a freebie, but it's part of the costs of the, the initial. Megaport, you start out with a spaceport. This is about accessibility, okay? So obviously if you don't have any way for anybody to access your colony, you're gonna be doomed, right? So this is the port in which you can get things and sell things. So this is the center of your colony input and output, okay? You have to have a port um, in the end you know to really do anything with your port 
uh, you can upgrade to the Megaport. So that's what this is. Uh, Waystation. Waystation adds to your accessibility. That's all it does. So, um, yeah, that's accessibility bonus 10%. Is 10% significant? At this point, no. At the very beginning, when you first found this colony, hell yeah. Okay, so it's one of those things that just adds to your accessibility. Farm. Um, in all the industries, you have to decide what you need and what you don't. If you don't need it, if your colony does not have farmland, it's not going to let you build this. Okay, so just keep in mind that a lot of things are going to be the proverbial grayed out. Um, and unfortunately, I can't show you that here, but... Um, if, it, if, if you cannot use it in some way on this particular planet colony, it will not let you build. So that's, that's the bottom line here. So uh, what can we do? Um, always, you can either right click or left click. It does not matter. Left click will show you what options you have. You always have the option of shutting down. What does shut down do? I shut it down, get rid of it. It's out of here. Okay. So you basically are deleting that particular improvement off of your colony. Otherwise, I can manage AI uh, or I can add and install an item. So I'm going to go back over here to the uh, population infrastructure and show you this install item, manage item. Um, so there's two options here. Um, in the case of dark... Well, I'll just I'll read it here. Orbital fusion lamp counters the effects of cold, extreme cold, poor light, and darkness. So these are four possible conditions that you would see up here in your colonies, and this counters four of those. Okay, so in in this case, cold, extreme cold, poor light, and darkness. All four of those are going to add to, I'll show you the number, uh, the hazard rating. Okay, so I'll show you that number here in a second, so keep that in your mind. Um, all of those are negatives. So this counters the negative, right? So the idea is this improves your hazard rating for the planet, which will increase growth. Growth will eventually increase colony size. Okay, so all those factors are, are related. In this case, I have the hyper shunt tap, which you can see up here at the top. What does that do? Increases the maximum number of industries at a colony by one when the demand for 10 units of transplutonics is fully met. Okay, so having this means you have an inherent demand for 10 transplutonics per cycle, whatever month, whatever we want to call it here. Okay, so you're going to be spending those to make this thing work. But ultimately, when it has those, uh, it's, it's going to give you that bonus. Uh, same thing is true for the orbital fusion lamp. Um, as long as you have 10 volatiles available, you will get the use of this guy. And it will counter those particular effects. So in this case, the hypershunt tap... Um, the, the thing you have to know about the hypershunt tap is you have to have a coronal hypershunt somewhere within 10 light years to use this. Otherwise, it won't let you build it. And I do. I, it's in the, col the yeah, colony. Uh, it's in the star system right next door to me. Uh, part of this mod, in fact. Okay, so this is how you put those in. Select them and uh and put it in in this case you know it's it's already there so i i don't need to do anything um so any of these might have an option in this case here let's look at one that is not an optional so this is the device that would normally go in there but here's the requirements it has to be a standalone station or the planet has no atmosphere in this case, it's a habitable planet, so hey, there's an atmosphere, okay? So I can't use that here. So not all items are usable, but you know there may be advantages or disadvantages. So all these different things. Light industry, if we look here, it takes organics and it creates um, 
in this case, uh, domestic items, luxury items, and <gasps> drugs. Okay, so all these drugs are in this case because I'm a free trade port, then they come and go. Um, there are some requirements for drugs, strangely enough. So your industries actually all need a certain amount of drugs. So whether you import them or create them in this case, you need them. Uh, so it's just another commodity, even though in many factions it is illegal. Okay, Orbital Works. Orbital Works is an upgrade from heavy industry. So you start out by building heavy industry and then you eventually upgrade your heavy industry to Orbital Works. Uh, I've also got an AI on here. There's a Nanoforge. You can find the two which we demonstrated before uh, is either the Corrupt Nanoforge or the Pristine Nanoforge. That's where you get those bonuses. That's where that particular device get, belongs. Fuel production. Also vanilla game. It takes... Uh, heavy machinery or uses heavy machinery but there's always the possibility of uh, damage to the heavy machinery at which time they need to be replaced and the usable the consumable here is those volatiles so as long as you are getting volatiles from somewhere then you can produce fuel here so it doesn't have to be here uh, in this case I am trading freely um, which is in fact what some of these other things so if you see the gear, it is being produced here. If you see my flag, I am getting it inside my system, but from somewhere else, from another colony within my system, within my control. Okay, so uh, fuel, I, I'm, I'm short one fuel, but I'm, so I'm getting the one fuel from somewhere else in demand, but I'm producing this much. Um, in this case, I'm getting these from somewhere else because I don't produce any volatiles here. This planet does not have volatiles, so I have to get them from somewhere else. Heavy batteries. This is about protection. So because I have heavy batteries at every colony, I am considered a military-based faction. So every colony that I have will say military. So heavy batteries, what does it do? It protects me, okay? So that's what this is all about. You uh, initially have, um, I'm trying to remember what it's, what it's called. Let's, let's look. Ground defenses, okay? So it's initially called ground defenses when you build it. You upgrade to heavy batteries, which then become more defensive, um, so more protective. High command, so the first thing that we build is patrol, I think it's patrol HQ, uh, patrol headquarters. And then you upgrade to military base, which takes another industrial slot. You have X number of industrial slots available to you. Uh, things that are structures, you can build any number until you run out of slots on your, on your view. Um, which is, in this case, the 24. Um, the industrial slots, you're limited based on the size of your colony. So you start out with just a couple, so you have to be extremely judicious. Things like farming, light industry, mining, refining, orbital works, all use an industry slot. Okay, likewise, when we upgrade from the patrol headquarters to the military base, we also use a slot, an industrial slot. So keep that in mind when you're doing it. You, it's nice to have protection, but there are some downsides, such as stealing a, an industrial slot that you might very well need for somewhere else. Uh, you get more slots according to the colony size. Um, okay, planetary shield. Planetary shield is planetary shield. Um, you get a lot of pluses for having a planetary shield. Ground defense strength goes up dramatically. Um, it protects against um, meteors, just to name a few. All right, uh, second page. Uh, tech mining. Uh, tech mining. Tech mining is vanilla. Tech mining is when there are ruins 
then this is like the constant group of archaeologists that go down and dig shit up. They find weapons, they find blueprints, they find it, just amazing shit that they find. Um, so this is a good good industry to have. Uh, commerce. Commerce. Commerce is commerce. Um, this is your ability to access the open market. That's really what this is, is the ability to buy and, and buy, sell, and trade. That's what this is. So definitely a handy thing. Does take an industry slot. Um, this is part of the... Um, nope, sorry. I, I, this is vanilla. So when you find a cryo, a cryo sleeper ship, um, if you are within 10 light years of the cryo sleeper ship, you can use this thing. It's a structure, so it, it just takes up a slot on the screen. It doesn't take up an industrial slot. Um, and it will help your colony grow. When you get to colony size 10, you can't get above 10. So this is pointless. So I could actually get rid of this and put something else on that may be more beneficial. So this one is no longer beneficial to me. It's not doing anything for me. Um, uh, autonomous Battle Station. This is part of the Terraforming and Stations mod. It's an autonomous uh, AI run battle station. So you don't need crew. You need less supplies. Blah, blah, blah. So nice, nice to have. But it's it's the equivalent of hmm I thought it, it's it, it's the equivalent of the Star Fortress high tech okay so it's it's equivalent to that it just that needs crew this one doesn't uh, chameleon so chameleon is part of the industrial evolution mod um, Nope, nope. It, it's it's part of the. I'm sorry. Um, it's part of the uh, terraforming and stations. So, what this is is it is a security mechanism that actually lets you root out uh, what they call subpopulations, so undesirables, right? So they can tap into this and use this, and it will prevent some of these undesirable populations from ever affecting you. So it can actually have a very negative effect on um, the, the Luddic path, for example. Um, so anyway, nice thing to have. Dome cities, also part of the uh, uh, terraforming mod. So good thing. Uh, it reduces, um, it reduces the hazard rating. You see the hazard rating there is 50%. 100% is base. Everything is 100%. Okay? So the idea is as you add these hazard reducing things, then they will reduce that hazard rating. Hazard rating goes down, your growth percentage will go up, and your colony will go up. You know, so these are all related. So the more hazard rating, the slower your growth will be the slower you will progress in colony size okay so keep in mind as you as you go along uh, hydroponics another part of that particular mod um, what does hydroponics do it it basically creates food out of nothing right hydroponics ah. um, so basically you are using your heavy machinery which again has a percentage chance of of breaking at which time it needs to be replaced so the fact that you see it demand here says I need this many but it's not constantly consuming them okay so when they break then they are consumed indeed but normally it just uses them and it will run for X number of cycles with their use with the percentage of breaking at which time they get replaced so it's not like it needs all of these every single time so, um, and produces food. Now, what does food do for your colony? There's a certain percentage of food that is needed for your colony because, hey, your people have to eat, right? 
So they do use some food, but everything in excess is exportable, which is to say tradable, which is why you see that credits per month is a million and a half because I'm selling all of my surplus. When I sell my surplus, that's cash that goes in the coffers. So obviously this particular colony is making far more uh, than it is needing. So I have a surplus, therefore I have credits per month. You could also have a negative number here where it costs you money every month uh, and you're needing the others. Um, this creates more alpha cores. That's the, entirely what this is all about. It creates more. Uh, Mesoic Park. Uh, think Jurassic Park. <laughs> um, this is a plus to um, your credits per month. So think of it as a touristy thing. The more tourists you bring in, the more cash you get, right? So this is a tourist thing. Domain archaeology. Um, this is, you can only build this on planets that have ruins of some kind. And it will create, uh, sorry, can't, can't roll over that. It will create these artifacts, or find rather these artifacts, and then these artifacts are used by other things, such as the simulator in this case. Um, so they're consumed by a chameleon also uses those. So basically, the domain archaeology um, finds those relics, and then there are other industries that actually consume those relics. So this is that same relationship here. Okay, stellar reflector array. Again, we talked about this earlier. That's this thing up here, orbital reflector array. So this enables you, so an array of orbital reflectors that modifies, oh, sorry, moderates, excuse me, temperatures and improve, improves crop yields. So in this case, it, extreme, it, it affects the cold and can affect the darkness. So it drops the hazard rating proportionally, but in this case, it adds to the, f the crops. Okay, so, and actually it demands one of those too because it's from that mod. Atmospheric processor. Now, the atmospheric processor in this case does absolutely no good on this planet because I've done all the terraforming that I can do. But in many cases, if your atmosphere is for whatever reason not ideal, this will help you with that. All right, so I'm just about out of time here. So amazingly, I'm going to stop under time today. So this is what I hope was the overview for understanding what some of your colonies are. I didn't get to do everything I wanted to do, but I'm, I, I don't really want to go over that two hour because I don't want to bore you to death. But this is kind of an overview of, in the case of an advanced game, it just lets you see what some of these things actually are. And hopefully you will be able to understand what their use is uh, as, as you go along and, and hopefully have some fun in your own game. So eventually you will be able to build these. Each one of these items does have a certain cost associated with it. So in the end, the amount of money that you have uh, can be very, very important. So if you start out as a merchant or start out as a trader, same thing, um, you start out as a smuggler, now you're moving other things. Um, you know, however you start out in making money, bounty hunter, uh, moving people around, you're just uh, a freelancer that will do anything, however you actually start building your money, you're going to have a certain amount of costs that's just your fleet. You have to pay your crew, you have to pay your officers, all that sort of thing. You have to pay for supplies, you have to pay for fuel, those sorts of things that are costs to your fleet which you will have throughout the game. Um, and let's extremely brief. I, I know now I'm going to be overtime. So this is my overall income for all of my colonies. And you can see I've got quite a bit of income here. So this is where I'm at currently in the cycle. This was for last month. So 12 million that I've got coming in on a, on a realistically monthly basis. But you can see I've got a whole lot of colonies here. Um, so each one of those, which is adding, 
you know, this one, obviously a very, very low, that's a uh, gas giant. Um, so there's not a whole lot of things that I can do there, but obviously I need to go and dress some things. Most likely what this is, and you can drill into this and see what is on this. So you can see my exports are quite a bit, but my infrastructure here is very costly. So I can actually look, and of course there's hazard pay, which is pretty pricey, and I can go back and evaluate whether I really need to, to have hazard pay. But let's look at the uh, industries here, see which industries that I need and which ones I do not. See, I don't see anything specifically here that I do not need. Uh, light industry is questionable whether you need it. Uh, Reuter dives, that's part of the Reuter um, mod. So there's some questionable things, and, and you always want to police this and make sure you're not using something that doesn't necessarily give you a positive effect. Uh, if it's costing you more money than it's worth, get rid of it. Um, you, you will find your, your colonies will be more profitable that way. But, I mean, we're, we're in the black, so do I really, really worry about it? No. And you're going to see a lot of variant as you go. Um, so, but... Uh, Drilling into all these different things, let's go back up to the top here. You can see my fleet here is a negative. There, your fleet doesn't make any money. So in the end, it's about trade. So how much money you manage to trade. But in the end, your fleet is always a red line item in your budget. It will always cost you money. Uh, I have a boatload of crew. I have a boatload of Marines. I have quite a few officers, even officers that are sitting idle doing nothing. They cost you per month. So you want to be careful how many crew you have, how many Marines you have. You want to balance those out. Do I pay any attention to that? Nope, because I have a billion dollars in the bank. I don't care. So as I roam around and do whatever I do, if I get a new ship, I've already got the crew. Here's the crew. Um, I've already got officers. Boom, stick it in there. So do I care about any of that? No. Should I? Yes. I really should pay attention. I should keep the number of crew that I have that is similar with some margin of error. How many Marines do you actually need? That's up to how aggressive you are as a player. All right. So this is all the different things. Uh, last final thing. How did I get there? Command. So the D. And then you have all these different tabs you can go into. And we really only went into the two the colonies, which tells you a little bit about the colonies individually, including what their uh, different conditions are that you can look at right here on a, on a simul screen, simul, uh, a, a singular screen. And then uh, this is the solar system in which they are located. The in system in this case is the system I am in. So that should hopefully make perfect sense. So four colonies which are actually located in the neighboring system of Bengali Tigris, which is also part of my mod. So anyway, colonies, income, those are the only two that we're going to go over for this one. And I'm going to stop now that I'm two minutes over, even though I said I was going to stop before that. So this is Kenty Tiger signing off, and we'll see you next time.